This is example 9-1, a sliding plate. So we have this plate that is sitting on a thin oil, oil film and it's sliding down the slope. And we're told that its terminal velocity is two meters per second. Right? So at that point, the gravitation and the, the uh, shear stress are balancing each other out. Right? So that's why it's no longer accelerating. But before we start, let's draw ourselves a free body diagram of our plate. Right, so this is our plate, like this. And of course, on that plate, we'll have the weight of the plate, which is given to us as 20 kilograms, or the mass is given to us as 20 kilograms. That'd be our weight. We know that we're going to have a normal force acting on this plate. That'd be our normal force. And of course, we'll then have the uh, the friction force right so we'll have our f here let's call that f fv um, and then we should also define ourselves a coordinate system now we could go with x and y um, but we're really interested in what what fv is here so let's do a coordinate system that is parallel and perpendicular to the slope something like this where the this part would be the parallel part and this one is the perpendicular part. That means we can divide our weight into two components. That would be the parallel component, and this would be the the uh, the vertical uh, the uh, um, perpendicular component. And of course, we know that this angle here is the ten a is ten degrees that we see there. Right, so we can see ten degrees. And I think with that, we have our uh, free body diagram. I don't think there's anything else acting here. So we already said that the plate is not accelerating. Plate not accelerating. That means sum of forces is equal to zero, right? Because our A is equal to zero. That means if we just want to look in the uh, parallel component, right? Then we can say the sum of forces that are parallel equal to zero, equal to minus FV. It's pointing uh, to the left, and then we have W uh, parallel, which is in pointing the other direction, so plus. W parallel equal to zero. Of course, if we have that, we can simply solve for our FV. So we can say that means FV is equal to W parallel. Now, what is W parallel? Well, it's going to be our W times. Now, this would be the, the opposite uh, leg. So that would be times sine 10 degrees. Now we're not given the weight, we're given the mass, so that would be m times g times sine 10 degrees. And I'm not going to calculate this out, we're just going to leave it as that. So that would be our Fv. That's the force that's acting there. We know that we have a plate that is 600 millimeters long and 400 millimeters wide. So we can say that our shear stress the shear stress uh, of FV acting on plate is then tau is equal to F V over A, which is M times G times sine of 10 degrees. And the area is just the width times the length. All right, so now we know what the shear stress is. That is on the bottom of the plate. Now we know that this is 
sliding on a thin film of, film of oil, right? So we can say we have a, uh, a flow between those two plates, the, the solid slope and the sliding plate. So we can assume that we have steady laminar flow. So like the part that we're assuming is laminar, it's definitely steady because it's not, not uh, accelerating. We will put a little question mark behind uh, laminar, a uh, laminar flow between two parallel plates. Parallel plates. All right, so we'll have to check later on if that's if it's actually true. So what do we get if we have two uh, parallel plates? Well, we have one of those two plates is moving. So we can write our equation as tau of y is equal to the velocity that the plate is moving times the viscosity of the, the liquid divided by a Oop, divided by lowercase a. Right, that's the the how far the two plates are apart. And then plus our slope term, so ddx of p plus gamma h. And all that times y minus a over 2. Now, first of all, we have to decide for y is, right? y is going to be at the moving plate. So by our definitions, we can say that different definition for y, right? We can say that shear stress at moving plate, right? That means y is equal to a right, we go across the entire thickness of our of our flow between the two plates um, uh, on both sides of the plate we're in contact with the atmosphere here in contact with atmosphere right well, which of course means that our pressure is equal to zero so we don't have any pressure gradient and we have a constant slope. All right, and a constant slope is what is dh dx, and that is equal to minus sine of, no, not of 30 degrees, but of 10 degrees. All right, with that, I think we have everything we need to plug into our equation on the top there. Um, so let's say that is equal to tau of uh, of a is equal to u times mu over a. Now the pressure term doesn't do anything. All right, so we have zero because there's no pressure gradient plus gamma times minus sine let's keep on reading 10 degrees uh, tender sine 10 degrees and that times a minus a over 2 right? because we replaced y by a that means we can simplify right we can say as u times gamma divided by a uh, minus that zero we can leave out that gives us a minus minus gamma times sine 10 degrees times a over 2 now we already found out that our tau also has to be equal to what we got from our free body diagram so we can say that is equal to m times g times sine 10 degrees divided by W times L. And that is what we find. All right, so then let's scroll down. Now we can start solving for stuff, right? What we're looking for in the end is the, the uh, we're looking for A, right? So let's try and get an equation in terms of A. So we can multiply everything by A. So we have U times mu 
minus uh, let's write this this way gamma times sine 10 degrees divided by 2 so if we multiply by a we get a squared and on the other side we get mg sine 10 degrees divided by w times l times a we can rewrite this when we write this we get can bring both of these terms over there so we'd have gamma times sine 10 degrees over 2 times a squared plus m times g times sine 10 degrees over w times l times a minus u times mu is equal to zero and of course this is a quadratic equation that we can solve um, so i guess we can write that with uh, values as well right so we can say that will be uh, gamma would be the density times g so 900 kilograms per cubic meters times 9.81 meters per second squared times sine 10 degrees divided by 2 times a squared now I don't think our full a term is going to fit in here so let's write that on the next line plus the mass was 20 kilograms g is again 9.81 meters per second squared and we have sine 10 degrees and mg sine 10 degrees uh -huh. divided by the width was 400 millimeters so 0 0.4 meters the length was 600 millimeters it's a zero not a six let's make that clear 0 0.6 millimeters uh, times a and then minus two meters per second which is our u and divided by our viscosity or 0 0.0685 newton times seconds per meter squared all equal to zero let's put it up here zero equal to no can't read that let's erase that here let's give ourselves a little bit of space say zero equal to there we go and then we can plug that into into whatever solver we want to use or we can do it by hand but we get we get two solutions because of course it's a quadratic equation but one of them is going to be negative so we know that's not a not a physical uh, solution so but the one that we get would be 9.601 times 10 to the oops 10 to the minus 4 meters or 0 0.960 millimeters All right so this would be the opening how far that plate is apart so not even a millimeter now at the very beginning we said that we're going to assume that we have um, laminar flow but we should check that so let's say check if flow is laminar so that means we need to get the Reynolds number re is equal to the density times the velocity times the separation divided by mu so that is 900 kilograms per cubic meters times 2 meters per second times the distance that we just calculated 9.601 times 10 to the minus 4 meters 
All that divided by the viscosity, 0 0.0685 newton seconds per meter squared. And if we plug that into a calculator, we will find that that is equal to 25.2, which is, of course, quite a bit less than 1,400, which we said is the critical Reynolds number for flow between parallel uh, planes. So we can say we have laminar flow, which means that our solution approach uh, was, was uh, valid. All right, so this is how we find what the separation distance is for the plate that's sliding down a slope on a thin film of oil.